So a while back, I created a video on my entire backup stack, the tools that I use, the services, where I backup to, and so on. And that was a pretty popular video. But a couple of things have changed very, very recently. And I just wanted to kind of go over those, why I've changed things, and just give you a sort of an update. So previously, I was using Dropbox as my main cloud storage. And while there's nothing wrong with Dropbox, I do like to look for ways in which I can streamline my process and also ensure that I'm getting the best value. And that's why I've changed over from Dropbox to something else. In this video, I'm going to show you what I've changed over to, why I've changed over to it, and some of the things that have kind of changed in the dashboard and how you kind of connect things up. Okay, so I already talked about Dropbox. So let's first of all, just jump over and take a look at the pricing structure for Dropbox. Now, you can have a free account, which is perfectly fine, and that's okay. But when you're sort of doing backups on a regular basis, or you have the feature to backup whenever an update rolls out, and it's a WordPress website or websites, we know there's regular updates. This is something that very, very quickly fills up. So you are gonna to need to look at some kind of professional storage solution, especially if you want that peace of mind knowing that if anything goes wrong, they've got data backup things in place to make sure that they have a legal obligation to you. When you move over to a personal or a business account, that's when things change price-wise and also feature-wise. So if we take a look at the pricing, you can see currently you've got two for your personal and you've got three for your business. Now, if you were doing this for a business, I would always recommend using the business service because the terms and conditions tend to be a little different on there, more in keeping with making sure that your data is safe. Obviously, look into this. This is not legal advice. So you can see we've got professional standard and advanced. So let's just say we opted for the lowest of those, which is the professional. That gives you three terabytes, basically. One user, and you can see we've got sync technology. So if you're a Dropbox user, you can sync these things up. 256-bit AES, SSL, TLS encryption. Always good to have encryption and things in there. File recovery and version history up to 880 days. You know, all those things that you would come to expect. So this is where you can take a look at all those things. Now let's take a look at the pricing of this. So we've got a purchase now. You can see we've got two options. We can be billed annually, which is in this case being a UK customer, £199 per year, or you can be billed monthly, which is £19.99 per month, which is a little bit more expensive, an extra £40 on top. That can very quickly mount up. Yes, it's cost of business. We know that these things are something you can pass on to your clients, but if you're doing this for yourself, these charges can mount up very quickly when you look at some other things that you need to do just to have a website online and being backed up. So I moved over to pCloud. Now pCloud, a couple of years ago, was over on AppSumo, and I regret now not buying that lifetime deal because it was a very good deal. But because I was a Dropbox user, and I was happy with that, pCloud was a name that I wasn't used to, wasn't familiar with. They were pretty new to the marketplace at that time, and I kind of felt I didn't want to put my important data in someone's hands that I wasn't feeling comfortable with. Move on a couple of years and that's changed. They are well established, they have a solid reputation and from time to time they do come up with various different discounts but take the discounts out of it. They offer a lifetime deal on either 500 gigabytes or two terabytes which is what I purchased and you can stack these on top of each other so if you want four terabytes and so on you can add more to your account and you can take advantage of the lifetime deals. But you can see, even if you don't go lifetime, you have a pretty solid pricing structure. It's a little expensive when you look at the 500 gigabytes in comparison to the two terabytes, but two terabytes for 85.99 per year, that's over 50% discount to what you have with Dropbox. Yes, you have a little bit more storage with Dropbox. You have another terabyte, but you could stack this and you would still be cheaper. But let's take a look at the lifetime. And this is what I did. You can see, again, I would ignore the 500 gigabytes because the pricing side of things, you're basically paying twice as much for 500 gigabytes in comparison to what you're paying when you look at the two terabyte pricing. And that's obviously what they're doing. They're pushing you over to the two terabytes. This is what I grabbed. Now, it was on a Black Friday deal, so I got this for about 80 pounds off. But keep an eye on this if it's something you want to look at because they do regularly have deals going on. But this is what I purchased. So what do we actually get for this? Well, so if we take a look, you've got your pCloud core features. You can see you can share links and file requests. So if you wanted to, much the same as you can do with Dropbox, you can link this up and you can share files. You can password protect files. You can have encryption 
the encryption you do have to pay extra for if you want to use that though. Automatic upload your camera roll. So the nice thing with this is you can install this on a Mac, on a PC, on an Android device, on an iPhone, and then you can use this to back up. So if you want to avoid things like Google and you want to avoid things like iCloud, you could use this to back things up too. You can also have this set up so you can use it with Time Machine if you're a Mac user. You can have backups, you can have incremental backup. There's a ton of things you can do with this. And you can see, just check it out for yourself. But what you need to do then once you've grabbed this is if we hop over into one of my sites, pCloud is supported inside WP Vivid Backup Pro and the free version. So this gives you another option. So for me, this is one of the key factors for it. Two terabytes directly integrated into WP Vivid Backup Pro. And we've got two locations. So when you create your pCloud account and when you then want to link it to things, you can set where you want the data to be stored. Currently, you've got the United States and you've got the European Union or the EU. So you can set things up to be the lo lo closest location to you. And you just use this in exactly the same way as you would with Dropbox, Google Drive and so on. You literally go ahead, you authenticate your account, you connect things up, you set up any preferences you want, including the naming conventions you want, the number of backups you want, the block sizes to make sure you don't have timeouts. For most parts, you can leave most of this to the default settings. And then I've just set that now as my default storage location. And the whole process is incredibly simple. So if I go and do a manual backup, I can send this to my remote storage. I can then go ahead, choose what I want, and then I can hit the backup now option. That will then go ahead, run a backup on there, and then transfer that over to my pCloud account into the relevant folder with any kind of comments I want to associate with it, all done seamlessly in the background. But as I've seen before, one of the key things that I recommend if you are using WP Vivid Backup Pro, and I would recommend you use it, is when it comes to having to update something on your WordPress website, we all know the dread and fear that that kind of brings with it, especially if it's WooCommerce or Elementor or something that's a really key integral part to your site that could cause it to go offline. That's why I like to use the option to backup before update this part of WP Vivid Backup Pro. Dedicate your video to this, I'll link it in the description below. But what you really need to do is under the settings section of WP Vivid Backup, you have an option which should be enabled by default, which is auto backup before updating. And all this does is it allows you to have a backup transferred over to either your local storage, if you want to have it on the server, which I wouldn't generally recommend, or send it over to a remote directory on your cloud storage. So you can see default location for backups, we can set cloud storage, and we can see auto backup before updating, and we'll say we'll send that to the cloud storage as well. Now, every time I update a theme, a plugin, or anything else, incremental backups are sent over to the location that I've said, in this case, pCloud, and then if I have a problem, I can roll those back to the previous version. As a user of Elementor, you know how useful that can be. And the same thing goes for tools like WooCommerce. The ability to roll back quickly to a previous fully working version is invaluable. I know you have these kind of options inside Elementor itself, but let's be honest about it. If you've tried that, it isn't always the most reliable to roll back using that method. I would much prefer to have something that's offsite taking the onus away from the plugin itself to roll things back and have it roll back to when I know it was fully working and you can have multiple backups. So you might do something now and you need to roll back to something from maybe two or three backups ago. Depending on how you think set up, you can do that directly inside here, which is worth its weight in gold. So all I need to do now is hit save changes and then when I have any updates, I know that that's going to be backed up before the update takes place on themes and plugins. So in essence, that is what I wanted to go over today. Not really a tutorial, I've already covered these things, just a little bit of an update on what I've moved over to, why I've moved over to it, and maybe this is something you'd want to check out yourself if you are looking for a viable solution for off-site backups, or you just want some way like Dropbox, but you don't necessarily want to use Dropbox, pCloud is something worth taking a look at. Do your own due diligence, but I found it incredibly useful to start off with, and I'll be using this on all of my systems and use it as my main backup solution for all my websites. Anyway, all applicable links are in the description below if you want to check this out for yourself. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.